So the last tool that we're going to discuss using for web mapping is called uh, Cardo DB, and this is of all of them closest to a fully featured GIS on the web. Uh, it has many, many functions and capabilities that are, are sort of a, a class unto themselves, uh, and we won't have time to get into them, but I'm just going to show you how you can use existing data that you prepared to make a thematic map that you can then share online. So as with the others, the first thing you want to do is sign up for a free account. Uh, scroll down the page, hit the Sign Up Now link, and then just fill out your information and create the account. And once you've signed up, it'll log you in and give you this dashboard interface. Um, one thing that's important to note with CardoDB is that instead of uh, talking about shape files or layers, uh, they use the term tables because this is uh, more of how a database administrator would, would think about it. And um, this particular tool was developed by database people uh, rather than GIS people. But um, basically, if you remember that the term table means layer, uh, you'll be fine. So we'll go to create your first table. And you have a bunch of options for uh, importing, but uh, when it says zip here, that just means a zipped folder with all the components of a shapefile in it, but otherwise you can import a KML or a spreadsheet with uh, some geographic location data in it. Uh, a GPX uh, setup goes directly in if you've uh, collected that using a, a Garmin GPS unit or a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet format as well. So I'll be using some uh, Vermont Census data that I've uh, got here. We'll go to select the file, uh, choose the zipped folder that contains my shape file, and it'll take a little bit to process. And after a couple of seconds, the import is finished, and it shows you uh, what you're basically thinking of as the attribute table behind this data. Um, oh, it's important to note for the imports to Cardo DB, your shape files should be in WGS84. Uh, projection, which is EPSG 4326. That's, uh, you know, a matter of 30 seconds in, car in uh, Quantum GIS to, uh, to get that conversion done. Um, but that is the projection that it understands natively. So here's the table, and let's go to the map view to see what this looks like. And indeed, there is our shapefile. Uh, just translated to the CardoDB interface. And you can see this has a, a Nokia base map set as default, but uh, CardoDB has a bunch of base map options as well. Not as many as Mapbox, and indeed it actually draws on Mapbox for some of these. Um, but, you know, just enough to uh, give you some styling options. So what we wanted to do with this was turn it into a thematic map or a choropleth map that is nonetheless dynamic and shareable. The way to do that is to go along to the sidebars here. Uh, you can see we've got a uh, SQL window, uh, wizards, info window, Cardo CSS, and filters. The only two that we're really going to be concerned with here are the wizards and the info windows, but the others are what give this uh, platform its real GIS capabilities, so bear them in mind for future reference. So we go to the wizards, and you can see it gives us a bunch of options. At the moment, it's set to simple uh, polygon fill. We can change the color to that fairly easily. And it auto updates. You can change the transparency also very easily, updates very quickly. Uh, you can, in a manner very similar to most GIS formats, you can change the, uh, the outline width. Uh, that's what's referred to by polygon stroke here. Um, the composite operations and the label text are just additional options, but in this case we're going to be looking for the choropleth style. So it uh, grabbed a attribute column. You can see all of our attribute columns are available here uh, to use, um, but I'm mostly interested in going for the total population column, which I happen to know is this one. This is just you know, how census data works. It can be confusing, but uh, once you have a sense of familiarity around the attribute table, uh, it's easy enough to work with. But uh, again, so in this case, we're looking at census block groups. And you can see here, we've got a thematic map of where the population is most dense, uh, and or actually where the population is greatest and where it is uh, least populated. Uh, this is not, in fact, a measure of population density. But as we go along here, we can change the color ramp. I tend to prefer something that looks more like this, sort of a divergent color scheme. Uh, maybe drop the transparency just a little bit so that we can see more of the labels underneath. 
uh, reduce the outlines, but leave those. Yeah, it's a better way of seeing the data underneath. Uh, and then for label text, I think I'm just going to include the population number on it. So again, that was this field. And you can see just with the defaults, uh, it gives a decent halo on the label, though you can, uh, you can alter that. Uh, you have some very limited font options, but they're enough for these purposes. Uh, there's also composite operations you can do. But uh, yeah, basically bump up the font a little bit there. But what we're looking at here is now a thematic map of population by block group with total population in each block group listed in a label. The one other thing we might try here is an info window, which in this case you can see it's including basically every attribute item in the info window pop-up at the moment, which is just nuts. It's overwhelming. So look what happens when we click on one of these. We have this sort of endless list of attributes attached to each point, which could be useful in some cases, but let's just say we're only interested in a couple of things. So we're going to turn, scroll all the way to the bottom, turn all of these off by default, and then go back and just turn on a couple of things. So say we want to use the tract number, and then we're interested in, again, that total population number, which is this one. So now our pop-ups only include population and track number. We'll close this. And in order to share this, we just go to the humongous share button. This first URL link that you're given here, all you got to do is hit copy this. You can see it's already a nice shortened URL version. Go to a different tab, paste that in, And there's your thematic map, ready for sharing. There are a few other options you can do here, uh, same as with Mapbox and also with Google Maps. You can get an embed code. Uh, and if you're interested in using the JavaScript API, again, that's, that's much more advanced. There's the API key that you would use. Um, you can include table name or turn it off, uh, description or turn it off. A search box will give you the option to use a geocoder. So for instance, if you wanted to search for the city of Montpelier, I'd type it in there and it would uh, bring me to that location. It's a pretty standard geocoding function. And then uh, you can also make it shareable through Facebook and Twitter. One other option for a thematic map through CarterDB, uh, just out of the box, is to do a bubble chart which is just a different way of symbolizing the information that we've got. So we'll go to this again, and I'll scroll back to that column that is total population. And probably want to use Jenks as a way of breaking up the data. It tends to make it look uh, fairly pleasant and nicely distributed. Um, the radius minimum to maximum is just the difference between the smallest bubble representing the lowest population and the largest bubble representing the highest. Uh, this is in pixels, so let's make the radius of the smallest population much smaller, maybe like 5, and then let's make the radius of the biggest much larger, say 50. There you go, you can see that's updated. Uh, the stroke, I'm going to say that sort of detracts from the overall impact. That's sort of a muddle now, though. Uh, but something that you can do to uh, make this look more uh, thematically interesting is uh, increase the transparency on the layer. So you can see we're already starting to get sort of a heat map effect there. But then something else you can do is choose this effect called multiply. So again, we're back to uh, no compositing operation. These are the defaults once you've set the bubble fill down to 50% transparent uh, and remove the, um, the circles. Go down to composite operations and choose multiply. And that actually turns it into a legitimate heat map. And again, you can share this link.
and it automatically updates. And what you're looking at in this case is more of a, a heat map, it's sort of a density function of where population is in the state of Vermont. And it shouldn't be terribly shocking. Most of it's clustered around Burlington. There's some in Montpelier, some in up here. You get a general sense of where population density is and is not. There are many, many more functions available through CardoDB, but uh, those are the ones we're going to cover for the moment. And uh, you know, at a future point, I might even have to offer an entire class on this because uh, it does have uh, full-on GIS capabilities in a web environment, which is something that we're only now starting to really get a handle on um, in terms of what that means and uh, what sort of opportunities it opens up for us as GIS professionals in the future.